In this video, we're going to be building out a VS Code extension. The one we're going to be building is a synonym finder where we select a word and then the extension will find synonyms for what we have and it can replace the text with it. Now, to do this, we're going to be following or we're going to be starting with the uh, guide right here on VS Code stocks. And we're going to start by installing uh, these two guys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and pop this into just uh, my terminal. And I already have these uh, installed, so I'm just gonna control C it and move on to the next thing. After that, we're gonna say yo code. And this is going to create a, a boilerplate for us after we answer some questions. So we're gonna create the top one, a new extension in TypeScript. Um, what's the name? I'm gonna call it synonym finder. Keep the default here. Um, description finds synonyms. And yep, I'll accept a Git repository. I'm gonna choose yarn here. Um, and yeah, we'll let this install, and then I'm gonna open up this in VS Code. So I'm just gonna say code synonym finder. And then I'm gonna full screen this. And I'm going to move this here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close my terminal because we don't need it for any more tutorial. All right, so we're gonna open up source and inside that extension.ts is the main file we're gonna be dealing with. Um, so I'm gonna keep this open. The other one to take a look at that is important is our package.json. Um, so this has some important information in it. Um, you'll notice here we have a command already set up for us called hello world. So what we can do is if we hit F5, this will run our VS Code um, extension. And so what happens is you'll notice I have a VS Code open here and a VS Code open here. So here is where I'm gonna actually do the coding for my extension. And then what it did is it opened up a new VS Code window over here and this is where we can test our, ext our extension. So if I open up the command palette, which is command P on a Mac, um, and then, or command shift P to get the little carrot there, or a uh, greater than sign, and then we say hello world, this is the default extension that they gave us. So if we run that, you'll notice down here it says hello world. Awesome. Now the way we make changes to this, um, so in our extension here, um, we can change the code around like I'm just gonna say hello instead of hello world and give that a save. Now if we want these changes to be reflected over here, we have to reload the window. So I'm gonna say reload developer window and then hello world and you'll notice the change is reflected right here. So cool. So let's go ahead and get started on our extension. The first thing is, let's say we want to rename this instead of saying hello world um, in the toolbar or the command palette, we want to give it a unique name. Um, in our case, we're going to say find synonyms. So give that a save. And now if I come back over here and give it a reload, when we open up the palette, um, you're going to see find synonyms is the name of it now. So perfect. Um, and I could cap, probably could capitalize this if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it how it is. So the gist of our code is gonna happen in this little function right here. Um, so we wanna execute our extension whenever they run that uh, command. Um, and so this VS Code register command, um, we were passing in a callback and this callback function is what's called when the user clicks on it. So for right now, we just have show inf information message. That's the little thing we see at the bottom here. Um, the next thing that I want to start with is getting the text that the user has selected. So we can do this by getting access to the editor in VS Code. So we can do that by saying VS Code dot window dot active text editor. And this is possibly undefined. So we're going to say if it's not undefined or sorry, if it uh, does not exist or is undefined in this case we're going to return out and we can just show an error message editor does not exist so assuming the editor exists um, we can get the text that the user has selected so here i can say const text is equal to vs code dot window dot show not show information sorry this is editor dot document dot get text and then editor dot document sorry selection there we go 
So here we're saying uh, get the text at what selection, well the selection that the editor has. And I'm just going to display this text and a little message here. So I'm going to say selected text colon and then we're going to display the text that the user has selected. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this, we don't need that anymore. So I just gave this a save and then I'm going to come over here and give it a reload. And I'm going to open up a new file and say hello from selected text. I'm going to select it and we're going to run our find synonyms and cool. So we can see selected text, hello from selected text. So it correctly gave us the text that they have highlighted there. So the next step is to go get synonyms for the text that they've selected. Now to do this, I'm going to be using this API called DataMuse um, and it doesn't require an API key and it's very fast. So here we're going to be using, I'm just going to be using this first one right here. So this is what it looks like. Um, and we can pick just a single word if we want to do the test. Like for example, I don't know the word exit. And we see we get an array of synonyms, departure, leave, loss, etc. All right, so I'm going to copy this URL. And here I'm going to say const response is equal to await. And we're just going to fetch the data for this. So I'm going to make this callback asynchronous so we can use await here. I'm also going to need to install uh, fetch. So we need to open up terminal here. I'm just going to control C and say yarn add node fetch. And we also need to install the types for it. And then uh, we can go ahead and import this at the top. And just like that. And then I just did command period to open up that little window here when my cursor runs on here. Um, so with the response, we're going to say const data is equal to await response.json. And so this is where we're going to get the array of data um, here. So next up, we want to just display to the user the different synonyms so that they can pick which one they want. Now VS Code has a nice little uh, place for us to use this, um, and that is the Quick Picker. Um, and they have a nice little example that we can follow along with. So this Quick Picker is what this is. Um, see how it has like a list of things that we can pick? So we want to open that up with the extensions or the synonyms. And we can do that with the following chunk of code. And I'll link this below if you want to copy and paste this as well. So we're going to start by saying VS Code dot window. We're going to create a quick pick. Um, and then here we're going to set our items. In our case, we're going to say data dot map. Um, and then we're going to say for each item, we're going to say label is x dot word. So x dot word is the, from the API. So it's going to be the word right here. And the label is what's going to be displayed in the picker. All right. And then I'm just going to say this can be anything. Uh, and then here is when the selection has uh, changed or has been picked. So here um, I'm going to just destructure this. So we have a single item. So if we have an item, these are as a picked an item here, we're going to say uh, item dot label, and this will have the, the, the text or the one that the person has picked. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show a message with the thing that they've picked. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the selected text that we have here. We don't really need that anymore. Um, so after this, after they've picked a selection too, um, we need to get rid of the quick picker. So we're going to say dispose. And I think we're good to should we go ahead and do this now. We can keep this here um, and we can keep the quick pick dot show as well. So here I'm going to reload the window. And then uh, here we can pick the text that we want. So 
You can say quit, select the text, and find synonyms. And oh, it didn't come up. Do we do items quick pick dot show? It said selected text here. I want to say I saved it here. I commented this out. I think maybe. Oh, you know what? I also hard code exit. So I'm gonna comment this out. Um, this should have worked. I think what I need to do is uh, just, oh, I forgot to rerun my extension, that's why. So over here, it, it still showed the little button down here, so it made me think that the code didn't uh, get the newest version. And so that's how I kind of figured it out. And then here I can just say, actually I don't even have to do yarn start, I can just do F5, that's how we were running it before. But uh, while I have this, let's fix this real quick. I do want to insert the text that they have inside of the thing that we're actually searching. All right. And we may want to add pluses whenever the user has spaces in case the user has uh, a multi, uh, a multi or more than one word that they want to look up for some reason. Okay, so let's F5 this or refresh. All right, and new file here. Um, let's do pizza. Find synonyms. And so this is what this quick pick menu looks like. Cool. And so here you can see we have auto completion on it as well, which is pretty nice. Um, and we can also pick whichever one we want. So let's say I want a calzone. Um, and then we see in the menu down here, it says calzone. Nice. So really the last step with this is we are able to select the text that the user wants to replace. We have allowed them to pick a new synonym. We just need to replace the text here with whatever they've selected. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we can get access to it by saying editor.edit. So that's how we make changes to the user's code. Um, so we're going to say edit. And so what uh, this edit function takes is a callback. And then inside of here, we can say edit dot, and we can do whatever we want. In this case, we want to replace the code. And here we have to say, uh, what position do we want to replace? In this case, the current selection. So editor dot selection. And then what word do we want to replace it with? Well, whatever the user picked. So that's going to be item dot label. So we're going to give that a save, come back over here, reload our window. All right, pizza, oops, select it, find synonyms, and we can do sandwich, select it. You can see it popped up here, and we also have sandwich there. And again, we can just do this another time if we want to do a burger, um, and voila. So we have that, uh, our extension being able to do that now. Um, gonna comment this out. We don't need to display the label every time now that we're doing the replace here. So cool. So that is how you can create an extension in VS Code. Um, this is a pretty basic one, but this hopefully gets you an idea how you can get started. Um, I actually had a pretty fun time creating the extension. I thought the APIs for stuff was really easy to go ahead and use and the uh, everything is in TypeScript so you get nice types so I may be doing some more uh, extension stuff I enjoyed this so let me know in the comments below if there's an extension you'd like to see me try to make um, and maybe we'll see what we'll do in the future